Greetings and welcome to another Diablo 2 Resurrected video. Today I want to show you the progression of gear of a Lightning Trapsin and show you where you can go from a budget build to a more mid-range setup over to the high-end setup. So what items you want to go after, what items you want to trade for, what are you looking out for. And let's quickly cover the build itself. It's a trap sin. So I put in 20 into shock web, charge bolt sentry, lightning sentry, and death sentry. Then the rest of my points into fire blast to boost up the shooting of death sentry. And shadow disciplines can you you can do as you please. I recommend one point in burst of speed to have a faster laying of traps and one point into clock of shadows to have a bit of safety. But you can also go all the way down to shadow master and nothing into martial arts. So with that being out of the way, let's jump into the gear. So let's start with the glove options. So for a budget variant, you want to look out for anything that gives you resistances, maybe attack speed, maybe plus life. And as you can see, these gloves just give plus 25% lightning resistance. You probably find something better along your way through nightmare, through hell. Maybe you can shop for something better, but this is just what I want to show you, if you don't have any unique or set options, just look out for resistances and plus life. And if you can find them on a rare, um, also you can look out for attack speed. Attack speed will give you a faster laying down of traps, although burst of speed will cover most of it if you have enough plus skills. So next up on the gloves would be something like Sanders Taboo. Again, this is a good example. This has increased attack speed and 40 plus life, which is massive amount of plus life and a little bit of defense, but mainly we are looking for these attack speed and plus life. So these are very good. They don't have resistances, but that is all right. Uh, next up would be an upgrade Mage Fist. Plus fire skills gives you a boost to fire blast. And if you do, then also to your fire traps like Wake of Fire, etc., um, which are very good for leveling through normal and nightmare until Around Nightmare Act 4, you want to go Lightning Traps. So these fall off a little bit, but they have also regener Regenerate Mana on them and a faster cast rate, which doesn't really affect you until you have something like Enigma and are teleporting around. Also in the same vein, we have Trang Ult's Claws with faster cast rate and cold resist. But again, these are not very important as long as you don't have something like Enigma or casting a lot of stuff. Because Trap Laying, again, is dependent on your attack speed. So you might look uh, want to look out for something like chance guards, which are very good for magic finding and for finding these other pieces of gear like uniques and sets. So these come with up to 40% magic find, which is very nice. And some other stats, which we don't really care for, maybe extra gold is also nice, but the others don't really help us out. So if you have covered your resistances and your plus life enough, then chance guards are a good way to go. And this is for the gloves overall, so look out for life, for resistances, for increased attack speed, and maybe later on if you want for magic find or if you have something like Enigma where you teleport around, then look for faster cast rate if you need it. So next up are the weapon slots. And for weapons, you want to look out for plus to all skills, faster hit recovery, mana, life, maybe resistances. like. Spirit is just overall very, very good. You could also go with a claw that has plus to your traps or plus to specific traps like Lightning Sentry, but mainly they lack some of the other very good and important stuff like plus to mana and vitality and faster hit recovery. So Spirit is just overall very, very good. And I recommend doing that early into a Crystal Sword or Broadsword or whatever. Moving on from that, you want to get yourself a Heart of the Oak. This requires a Vex Rune, which is the expensive part of this. But other than that, is it's pretty okay. I mean, it's just a Pearl, Thal, and Co. And a four open socket flame, which you will find in, I don't know, doing Hell Cows or other Hell areas that will eventually drop. And this overall is just very, very nice because it has a plus three to all skills. It has a little bit of dexterity which can help us block you can also go for a max block approach with a shield but it's not recommended of course it has up to 40 percent all resistances which is massive and increasing maximum mana so this is the 
more mid to end game setup you want to look out for but something even more expensive would be something like that this seems like impossible to find but you get the idea you want um, a claw that gives you a massive amount to plus skills and this gives plus six to lightning sentry because of the plus three to traps and plus three to lightning sentry you can also socket it with for example uh, runes or uh, jewels that boost up your stats, that boost up resistances or something like that, but this is hero edited, which doesn't mean that this can't exist, but it's very, very rare. But something like that might be interesting to you. So that was it for the weapons. And again, spirit is just all very good, so you can easily go with that. But moving on to the helmets. You can start out with a lore helmet, level 27, it has plus to all skills, it lightning resist, it has plus to energy. Mana after each kill sadly does not apply to traps, which is unfortunate. And then after lore, you can maybe move on to something like Tarn Helm, which has plus to skills and a nice magic find. You can also sock it into a Topaz, perfect Topaz. Also after that, you want to get yourself a Harlequin Crest, a Shaco. Because uh, this has everything that we need. It has plus to skills, it has plus to life, plus to mana, damage reduction, and a lot of magic find. And you can either put in a perfect topaz or a jam rune, which would be more the end game setup. Um, a jam rune will open up other options for, for example, for your ring slot. So you don't need something like a raven frost for the cannot be frozen. Of course, and I don't have it here. You also can go with a rare circlet, diadem, tiara, anything that gives plus three to traps plus something else would be not rare, but magic. But two rare ones can have to can have up to plus two to assassin skills, for example, faster run walk, faster cast rate resistances. And you can gamble for those, but they are very rare to find. So this is it for the helmet slot. And let's go over to the ring slot. And again, here are the budget options first. Something with plus resistances, plus to life, maybe strength um, to help you equip your gear, energy to help with your mana. You don't need attack rating, you don't need life storm per hit. Faster cast rate, you only need later if you have Enigma. So look out for resistances and maybe magic find. Uh, moving on from that, of course, the Nagel Ring is very nice for magic finds. It has up to 30% better chance of getting magic items. So if you have covered all your resistances and all your other things that you can get from rings, you can move on to the Nagel Ring to boost up your magic finding capabilities. And if you want more damage instead, you can go with a Stone of Jordan, would be more of an end game setup if you're not looking for like uniques and sets so much, but more for raw damage to kill more monsters to maybe look for runes or something like that. Um, also, of course, there's the option of Bull Cathos always because it has plus life and also plus, plus two uh, skills. So these would be endgame options, but I personally would prefer Nagel Ring because I like the uh, extra MF. And yeah, this is it for rings. And again, there might be some rare ring with MF with resistances that you might prefer, but these are rare as well. So moving on to the boots, of course you have your budget option with faster run walk and maybe some resistances on it. Think at Nightmare Egg 2 you can shop for faster run walk and resistance boots because it's a prefix and a suffix on magic boots. So look out for that. And after that you can maybe find something like Inferno Strides, which also have faster run walk and fire resistance and also maximum fire resist, which is very nice. So look out for these stats, but if you want a more late game option, you can go with War Travelers, uh, which have a nice 50 or up to 50% magic find, among other useful stats. But in general, you want to look out for faster run walk, for resistances, for magic find on your boots. You can also go with rare ones, of course, or something like Sandstorm Drag. These are ethereal, but they don't have to be. But be of, um, because they are repairing durability, in 20 seconds or so one durability in 20 seconds these are very good in ethereal but you can also go with the non-ethereal as you can see they're also very nice because of faster run walks of strength fatality fast hit recovery something like water walks are also very good because of the plus life but you get the idea i personally prefer water travelers because of the magic find 
Moving on to belts, uh, if you are on a budget, you want to look out for resistances, for plus life, for faster hit recovery, all that good stuff. If you are going magic finding, you want to use a gold wrap because it has 30% better chance of getting magic items. Also 10% incre increased attack speed helps you in laying down your traps. If you want more security or safety, you can go with string of ears because of the 15% damage reduction. There's also something like Badangos has also damage reduction on it and I think vitality. Um, but we don't mind the lifestone hit, for example, because we are not leeching with our traps. And if you want something more endgame, you can go with Arachnid Mesh because of the plus one to all skills. This is the only belt that gives plus two skills and has also faster cast rate on it. So these are your belt options and moving on from that to amulets, you have the budget option looking out for plus two skills, resistances, plus two life, maybe some magic find um, that you want to have on your amulet. But if you, if you move on from that, if you are lucky, you can find the Maras. Um, again, it also has plus two skills, plus two life in form of plus two five to all attributes and up to 30 to all resistances, which is pretty nice. There are also rare or crafted options. And again, you want to look out for these all res life plus skills on your crafted or rare amulets. Moving on to charms, we have of course Anil, any, <laughs> sorry, Annihilus, uh, which also has all these nice stats, so maybe down the road you want to get that, but the more important thing would be a Hellfire Torch for the Assassin, because plus 3 to Assassin skill levels on a 2 item space charm, a 2 space charm, I don't know how you call it, 2 by 1, uh, is very, very strong, and you can get these torches for assassin pretty pretty cheap uh, for non leather of course if leather starts then at the beginning torches are um, more expensive but even then assassin torches are not the most sought after um, it's more like the sork and pala torches so try to aim for that try to aim to get a hellfire torch for your assassin because it boosts up your damage your attributes and your resistances significantly other than that we have Geet's Fortune, of course, if you want to boost up your magic damage. And in general, look out for trap skillers because they all boost your uh, damage. And for small charms, you want to look out for the usual stuff, for magic find, for life, for mana maybe, if you have issues with mana, and for resistances. Moving on to shields. At the start and for a budget I recommend a Rhyme Shield because it has a nice 25 to all resistances and a very important cannot be frozen which here you can get very early. Also 25% better chance of getting magic items is very strong in the early game because your magic find at the beginning so your first 100% magic find or 200% magic find are very strong. Um, magic find has diminishing returns. The more you have, the less each single point will contribute to your magic finding. So your first 25, your first 50, your first 100 points are more important or stronger than, I don't know, 0.400 to 500, for example. So Rhyme is a very good option for budget. You can wear this a long time. Maybe down the road you will uh, exchange it for a spirit monarch because spirit just boosts up your damage significantly with the plus to all skills and also gives you more more or less it depends i mean it has not kind of it hasn't cannot be frozen but it has more resistances lacking the fire resist of course and plus 22 to vitality and a lot of uh, plus to mana uh, so this is a very very good option of course there are other shields like lidless wall for example that comes to mind or if you want to go with a dual claw setup, if you have these GG claws, maybe you have two of them, which is pretty insane, uh, you can go without the shield, lacking survivability in exchange for more damage. So let's get to the body armors. We have the stealth, of course, the MVP of every early game a character, um, I think. Every character builds stealth in the early game. I don't know 
who wouldn't, because faster run work is very nice, faster cast rate for the spell casting characters, of course. Then we have faster hit recovery, which is also nice, and poison resistances. So get yourself a stealth armor early. Uh, don't mind the indestructible tag here, it's because of the hero editor. Uh, it normally, it does not have indestructible on it. Moving from stealth, you can go with the smoke armor if you need the plus resistances, especially in Nightmare and Hell difficulty. It's very nice to have plus 50 to all resistances because you get such a huge uh, minus to your resistances. So if you need more, some people stick to stealth, some people switch to smoke. So just need to look out for what you need on your gear. After that, you may want to go with treachery because it has plus two to assassin skill levels also nice increased attack speed helps laying down your traps the only thing you need to keep in mind is the chance to cast level 15 fate when struck because fate will override your burst of speed it will give you a lot more survivability because of the hour resistances and the damage reduction which fate provides but it will make you slower in running walking and laying down traps so keep that in mind. But it's a solid option if you have nothing better, like for example, yeah, you don't need resistance from smoke, or you don't have like something like a Viper Magi, Magi would also a good option, or maybe a Skaldas if you want the magic finding route and the plus two skills from Skaldas. Uh, yeah, so you can go treachery. But for endgame, of course, we want to get the Enigma because uh, it just is insane how good you can move around with the teleport also it has other very useful stuff on it plus two skills faster run walk plus two strength which helps you equip your gear not investing so much hard points into your strength damage reduction increase maximum life and magic find based on character level so you want to aim for that uh it's uh yeah it's just all around all that we want and need and plus the teleport which is very nice so what else have we got maybe second weapon slots you can go with a lower resist one and um, to lower the lightning resist of your enemies and make and do more damage with your traps you can also go with a teleport staff to teleport around if you of course don't have enigma and are on a budget you won't have a teleport by yourself and you can have something with these charges to help you in some of the areas or just moving beyond walls, not having to go around, etc. It's not recommended to always teleport because repairing this is uh, very expensive. I mean, I just used three charges and it already cost, okay, it's, it's 4,000 gold, that's that's okay, but roughly is 1,000 something or 1,500 for one teleport. And later you want to look out for something like call to arms with a spirit shield doesn't matter how much faster cast rate the spirit shield has we just need the plus to all skills because it also boosts up our battle command and battle orders for call to arms and this hugely boosts up your life your mana and that of your mercenary speaking of mercenaries let's first get him and see what he's wearing I, yes for you uh, should be a budget variant right here so for your mercenary you want to get an insight early so try to get and look out for something like a pole axe or a halberd all that weapons that where you can slot insight in it ral theater also uh, to get that meditation aura which will help you when you are casting your traps which can be very mana intensive and you don't want to jack all these mana portions all the time other than that Funny enough, um, the same like body armor options that are good for you are also good for your mercenary. Of course, you maybe want to aim for a treachery, maybe in the ethereal base, but for that you can I'll give him a smoke, use. you can give him a stealth, maybe you I'll can give him the use. stuff that, do, that you don't wear anymore and still use it. For the helmet, you want something like Tal Rasha's mask. In general, something with lifesteal because the inside does not have life steal. The body armor does not have life steal, um, but there are some that have. But they are pretty um, rare. There are not not many body armors with life steal on them. 
So you want a helmet with life steal and maybe resistance and maybe plus life. There's Talrashas, there's Crown of Thieves, there's Vampire Gaze. Uh, there are more options for the helmet with life steal than body armor. After that, for the end game option, you want to give your mercenary an infinity, of course, because infinity greatly boosts your damage. It breaks lightning immune. Just is so so good. So this might be your first goal after you got your torch if you really want to aim for your end game options first maybe enigma maybe infinity you have to decide for yourself what is more important uh, also you want to give him a fortitude which is the end game option for a mercenary or one of the end game options and maybe something like a use. ethereal vamp gaze with 15 percent is jewel you can also give him and Daryl's visage it's also very uh, common and popular choice I'll put that to good use and yeah that is it for the mercenary and I think we covered just about everything so let me know if you like this kind of content this kind of guides it's the first time I'm doing this so please bear with me try to do my best here and give you just the information that you might need that you might find valuable and I hope you did and if you did, show it by giving me a thumbs up, by subscribing, by commenting. Maybe I missed some items. I'm sure I did miss some items which are pretty good to give your assassin or your mercenary. Just let me know in the comments. And yeah, see you in the next video. Good luck, have fun and goodbye.